Um, okay, well, I want to welcome everyone uh, here in the US and in India. Uh, I'm Gary Gay. I'm the president of the Haiku Poets of Northern California. And this is a very special presentation for us. Our organization generally has four quarterly meetings a year. And then throughout the year, we have special presentations. Um, last year, we started doing special presentations on Zoom. And this is uh, probably, I think, our second presentation for, for this year. Um, so I'm not going to waste any time here because I know we have people wanting to jump into this special presentation. But I do want to welcome our friends from friends and poets from India. It's very exciting for us to have all you come and join us. Uh, we've never reached out this far and, and did something on this scale. And uh, we're all very excited. This will be recorded, as Sue may have told you, and it will go up on our website. Now I'm going to turn it over to Bruce Feingold, who's the vice president of HBNC. Uh, thanks, Gary. Um, I don't know how this brainstorm hit me. I think it probably hit me because uh, inspired me because I have several connections with poets, haiku poets in India through various activities. And uh, like many of you, uh, get the blog from Kala, the Trevini haiku uh, organization. Um, and also they're very involved in the Haiku Foundation in terms of haiku dialogue and different kinds of um, online blogs. So I think we're all well aware of the, the growing in tremendously wonderful um, haiku community in India. So I came up with the idea of connecting with Kala uh, to, to do something like this. And then all of us in the executive committee thought it was a good idea. And then Sue was instrumental. Sue Amplin was in, instrumental in helping bring this about as she's so good at organizing things. So I'm uh, really happy to have, be here with everyone and welcome all the Indian poets, as Gary said. Let me say, tell you a little bit about Kala and a special guest she's gonna have today. Uh, Kala Ramesh is the founder of Tavini Haiku India and Haiku Cafe Journal. And she's been conducting haiku workshops since 2006. She's been a leader in teaching uh, school children, over 600 school children about haiku and haibin through the Katha Creative Writers Workshop and the Bukaru Children's Library or Literary Festival of 2014 to 2018. Uh, she's an external faculty member of the Symbiosis International University, Pune. Uh, she has taught four full-fledged, four-month, 60-hour haiku courses for undergraduates uh, for over nine years. And this was the first for India. Uh, Kala has conducted haiku, tanka, haibin workshops for the public and haiku enthusiasts for the past 17 years, and latest being the Gala Goda Arts Festival on February 6, uh, where the organizers had put up a haiku houseful board outside the venue. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of you know Kala's poetry for haiku, which is really wonderful. And uh, I think all the poets that we're going to read, hear from today, reflect, you know, wonderful on haiku, but also on their culture and uh, their point of view, which I think is part of the uh, appreciation of today. Uh, she is also uh, has a special guest with us today to provide interludes of dance and music. And I would like to welcome V. Balakrishan, who's an alumnus of the Saram Ram Center for Performing Arts in New Delhi and the National School of Drama in New Delhi as well. He's the founding, is the founder and artistic director of the theater Nisha and has staged over 120 plays in the past 19 years. Uh, he currently teaches at the Arsha Vidya Mandir Alpha to Omega Learning Center and the Mind Screen Film Institute. Uh, he's an adjunct faculty at the Asia College of Journalism. And he's been using theater as a tool to improve communication to children with learning disabilities for nearly 20 years. Uh, he's worked with several international dancer groups and theater professionals and collaborative projects, including performance group Tuita from South Korea. Uh, he has several credit uh, uh, workshops and different aspects of theater. In 2017, he was awarded the Fulbright Distinguished Award in Teaching, and in 2018, the Rotary Club of Madre East uh, conferred the 
Dronchara Award on him for his contribution to theater education. And uh, 2019, he won a Hindu Playwright Award for his script. So that's going to be a really wonderful interlude to our haiku poetry day. And we have that tradition in HBNC. Uh, we have many people who have provided music um, as part of our presentation. So that'll be a wonderful uh, addition today. So thank you, Kala, very much for being here. And I'm going to turn it over to you and I'm going to mute myself. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Gavin. My pleasure. Thank you, Susan, so much. Namaskar to the haiku poets of Northern California and India. It's a beautiful summer night here in Chennai. It's been raining for the last two years and the heat has come down so much. When I received an invitation from Bruce and Susan to discuss the current state of Indian haiku, I was both honored and flattered. However, as I contemplated the vastness of this topic, I began to feel a mild sense of trepidation. India is a home to 22 official languages, regional languages, and many of them are actively engaged in haiku. Regional languages such as Hindi, Marathi, Telugu, Tamil, Malayalam, Bangla, Manipuri, Odia, and Punjabi are experiencing a surge, a surge in haiku, haiku's popularity. For this discussion, I will focus only on English language haiku, and even then, I will barely scratch the surface of what Bruce and Susan refer to as a state of Indian haiku. Approaching this topic is akin to a sitarist playing her sitar or a violinist playing her violin. I will offer you a glimpse into what I've experienced and enjoyed. Haiku has become a new obsession in India and those who embrace it do so with a passion. Indians are drawn to Haiku's celebration of nature's creative force, which is also a recurring theme in the Rig Veda, an ancient text that extols nature's beauty. Hindus and Buddhists believe that all of creation is made up of five essential elements, the Panchabhutam, ether, wind, fire, water and earth. At death, everything returns to these elements, creating a cycle of evolution and balance in nature. This thinking is interwoven into our daily activities, making haiku a natural extension of our roots. Rabindranath Tagore and Subramanya Bharati two of India's most revered poets from Bangla and Tamil Nadu were fascinated by haiku in, their early, in the early 20th century. In recent years, Professor Satyabhushan Verma, a professor emeritus at Jawaharlal Nehru University has emerged as a leading figure in Indian haiku. He was awarded the Masa, Masaoka Shiki International Haiku Prize in 2002, sharing the prize money of 1 million yen with American poet Kor Van Den Hegel. Hegel. I don't know whether I've got that surname correct. <laughs> okay. Uh, the Haikai world has also recognized the work of Anjali Devdar and Johannes Manjureka two Indian poets who were once actively involved in the haiku community. We in India are proud of their contributions to the genre and feel privileged to have inter interacted with them when they were alive. I will now move on to the PPT presentation.
I think after a reading, uh, uh, Ravi, will you be sharing? Yeah. After a reading of my poems, wait, wait, Ravi. After a reading of my poems, we'll have our season poets and then our rising stars. Each of these PPT presentations will have a refreshing interlude by theater Nisha's founder and artistic director, Bala. In 2017, as Bruce already mentioned, he was awarded the Fulbright Distinguished Award in Teaching. Today, we have his students performing for us. I'm grateful to the Haiku Poets of Northern California for this invitation. Thanks a lot. Deep in Raga, sudden applause startles the singer. Deep in Raga, sudden applause startles the singer. The ocean in a raindrop inside my womb, a heart. The ocean in a raindrop inside my womb, a heart. Tinkling bells, cows bring home the twilight hour. Tinkling bells, cows bring home the twilight hour. As I walk, the earth moves on bird song. As I walk, the earth moves on bird song. The darkness of my skin, on my soul, this stickiness. The darkness of my skin, on my soul, this stickiness. I soon whisper my grandchild to sleep, Mango Moon. I soon whisper my grandchild to sleep, Mango Moon. Receding waves, crab holes breathe the Milky Way. Receding waves, Crab holes breathe the, the Milky Way. Meeting after years, she believes I'm dying to know her story. Meeting after years, she believes I'm dying to know her story. Fingerprints all over my haiku. Birds in the sky leave no trace. Fingerprints all over my haiku. Birds in the sky leave no trace. Who am I? A falling leaf gives the answer. Who am I? A falling leaf gives the answer. Bala has chosen this haiku for his interpretation. The haiku is deep in raga, sudden applause startles the singer. Just a few lines to depict. One second, Ravi. The actors depict a raga starting at a slow pace, picking up pace as it progresses and culminating in a fast paced crescendo. Applause follows and the singer who is lost in her in improvisation is startled.
sound, Ravi? Ravi, can you go back? You'd enjoyed it, thank you. It, I would like to showcase selected poets and read their poems to you. When I made my first tentative list, I had over 17 seasoned poets, but I knew I wouldn't be able to cover everyone in this limited space and time. So it's just six poets. And with great reluctance, I let go of many of my favorite poets, seasoned poets. Arvinda Kaur exudes a soft-spoken and a gentle demeanor and writes about her cultural memory with effortless grace. She is a prolific poet and has a strong interest in translation work. Even without her sparrows. Even without her sparrows. Fever or new green stars emerge from pollen. Fever on 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 we, I'm sorry, fever on we, green stars emerge from pollen. Gitanjali Rajan. Gitanjali Rajan, a brilliant haiku editor at Cattails, has an innate understanding of haiku. Her extensive knowledge of the Japanese language, which she has been teaching for decades, is a forte. Cloudburst, another node shows up in the scan. Cloudburst, another node shows up in the scan. Autumn funeral. Garden ants bear away a rhino beetle. 
autumn funeral, garden ants bear away a rhino beetle. K. Ramesh. K. Ramesh, an ex-editor at Haiku Kata, is a highly esteemed and admired haiku poet known for his humility and kindness. He currently teaches at J. Krishnamurti's school in Tamil Nadu. Starlit sky. I touch a turtle before it enters the sea. Starlit sky. I touch a turtle before it enters the sea. Sunset. Someone's tent peg on the cliff. Sunset. Someone's tent peg on the cliff. Sanjukta Asopa. Sanjukta Asopa may not churn out poems by the minute, but the ones she writes turns out to be classics. She is one of the editors at Haiku Katha. Rain falling on rain, all day long this dialogue with myself. Rain falling on rain, all day long, this dialogue with myself. A red pull cart toy with nobody to pull it. Autumn deepens. A red cart, a red pull cart toy with nobody to pull it. Autumn deepens. Shloka Shankar. Shloka, Sh Shloka Shankar, the founder of Sonic Boom Journal and Yavanika Press, is a live wire with particular strength in crafting one line haiku. She is also a co-judge for the Trailblazer contest this year. Erecting landmarks in the field of why. Erecting landmarks in the field of why. Empty for the moment until whenever. Empty for the moment until whenever. Vandana Parashar. Vandana Parashar Sendryu makes readers sit up and take notice as evidenced by her numerous awards. She is one of the editors at Haiku Katha and is also involved with poetry P and whip tail in various capacities. Watchman's funeral. For just this once, I hold the door for him. Watchman's funeral. For just this once, I hold the door for him. Making up for the little space she takes, Robin's song. Making up for the little space she takes, Robin's song. Watchman's funeral, for just this once, I hold the door for you, for him, Vandana Parashar. Bala has chosen this sendryu for his interpretation. When our world comes to a halt, 
we begin to appreciate things since now we are lost. This is brought forth in this rendition. Thank you. We now come to our rising stars. The recent surge of new voices in the past few years has made an impact on the global haiku community. This is evident by the fact that I was invited by the haiku poets of Northern California for this talk. The haiku world is sitting up and taking notice of these emerging voices and poets, and rightly so. Initially, I had over 20 names on my list of rising stars, but I had to narrow it down to just five. However, I found it difficult to do so. And, and as a result, I'm showcasing seven poets who represent the many others who are also excelling in haiku in India at the moment. Ashish Nareen. Ashish Nareen possesses a profound understanding and acute sensibility for the inner workings of haiku, be it in a in the three line or, or one line format. He serves as one of the editors at Haiku Kata. A raven still black after dawn. A raven still black after dawn. Paper flags. They call their death 
glorious. Paper flags, they call their dead glorious. Hemapriya Chalapan. Hemapriya Chalapan is a brilliant artist and haiku poet excelling in both fields. She is an editor of failed haiku and haiku katha. She has been chosen as a co-judge at, at this year's Trailblazer contest. First light on the flip side of a bulbul song. First light on the flip side of a bulbul song. Train journey, moonlight settles on my lap. Train journey, moonlight settles on my lap. Lakshmi Ayer. Lakshmi Ayer is a spontaneous poet and her poems are deeply rooted in Indians, India's religious and cultural heritage. She serves, she served as a co-editor of Triveni Volunteer Dhanyavad Anthology. Autumn clothesline, the same old inner way taking turns. Autumn clothesline, the same old inner wear taking turns. Economic, economics class, a jet plane in the sky draws the exponential curve. Economics class, a jet plane in the sky draws the exponential curve. Ravi Kiran. Ravi Kiran is an intense poet. His talent is evident in his consistent wins at international haiku contests. He is a commentator in Poetry Peace podcast and currently serves as a web editor at Haiku Kata. In and out of the sunbeam, a golf ball. In and out of the sunbeam, a golf ball. Traffic jam, a raindrop space down the windscreen. Traffic jam, a raindrop space down the windscreen. Richa Sharma. Richa Sharma is a daring poet with a firm grasp on the intricacies of both three line and one line haiku forms. She will be the co judge at this year's Trailblazer contest. Meditation choosing to coexist with a housefly. Meditation, choosing to coexist with a housefly. Spring pond, a fish slightly pauses for a finger's touch. Spring pond, a fish slightly pauses for a finger's touch. Srini, Srini, a teacher at J. Krishnamurti's residential school in Rishi Valley, writes haiku that embody the art of leaving things unsaid. His poems invite dialogue with the images he creates, leaving a lasting impact on readers. Between waves, the light of a footprint. 
between waves, the life of a footprint. River town, just a gurgle of night. River town, just a gurgle at night. Teji Seti. Teji Seti is a co-founder of Tria, a bilingual journal. Her interest in India's partition and the resulting turmoil is reflected in her poems. She was the co-editor of the Triveni Volunteer Dhanyabad Anthology. Incense stick, dawn rises through the rings of smoke. Incense stick, dawn rises through the rings of smoke. His last trip on waters of the Ganges, a floating urn. His last trip on waters of the Ganges, a floating urn. Meditation choosing to coexist with a mosquito. Richard Sharma. Bala has chosen this haiku for his interpretation. Meditation is a continued focus on something despite distractions. In this rendition, the mosquito is totally absent as its existence does not alter the flow of the activities. Moving on to the rest of my talk on the flourishing haiku scene in India, as described by Susan and Bruce. The contemporary hygiene in India have infused haiku with their vibrancy by incorporating seasonal words and cultural practices unique in India. Haiku's experiential nature blends itself perfectly to this approach. Haiku has traversed various regions of India 
gathering unique flavors and influences along the way, from food to clothing and traditional practices to language, each state, each state contributes to the diversity of Indian haiku. India being an essential part of Eastern aesthetics, Indian hygiene can understand and connect with Japanese haiku at its core. Additionally, the prevalence of English as a medium of education in India has provided an advantage in spreading the art of haiku. Buddhism continues to hold a significant place in Japanese culture, and it is worth noting that Buddha himself was an Indian prince born out of Indian thought. For any significant paradigm shift to occur, it is necessary to cultivate a conducive and fertile environment on home ground. At the Triveni Utsav 2030, 2023, which I organized last month in Pune, naturalist and activist Manjuri Latte spoke about blending in. As an exercise, she asked each of us to draw a tree and then inquired about it. Many hands went up when she asked us who drew the tree with branches, leaves, and the sky. Then she asked how many drew a tree showing what happens below the visible tree the roots going deep into the soil. When walking through a forest, it's natural to pay attention to what is happening to our eye level and above, birds, sunlight, wind, and branches. But a lot is happening below our eye level too. The forest floor intertwined with the roots of the trees is a fascinating microscopic network of fungi. Most people, only think of mushrooms when they think of fungi, but those mushrooms are only the fruit of the fungus. Most of the fungal organisms live in the soil interwoven with tree roots as a vast network of mycelium. Trees communicate through this mycelium. Triveni Haika India is one such mycelium where we interact, communicate, and help each other to grow. Our roots are the mushrooms or blossoms that the world witnesses. Our poets, I mean, our poets are the mushrooms or blossoms that the world witnesses. The concept of giving more than taking is the underlying principle on which Triveni Haika India works. My father used to say that for a seed to sprout, the soil must be fertile. For the most, for the past 19 years, my work has been focused on making the soil rich and fertile to felicitate, facilitate growth. Since 2005, I had a dream of creating a website for the Indian Haiku movement, which came to life thanks to our talented web designer, Rohan Kevin Broach. Triveni Haika India was launched on September 18, 2021, and now has nearly 525 members, both India and outside the rest of the world. Triveni represents the confluence of three rivers in the Indian tradition, Ganga, Yamuna, and Saraswati, symbolizing India, Japan, and the rest of the world coming together to celebrate Haikai and Tanka literature. Our mission is to promote the appreciation of Haika and Tanka literature among Indian globally, Indians globally, and provide a common platform for Haika poets without regard to physical or imagined boundaries. Triveni Haika India has 35 web experts who manage various features which is unusual for any website which is typically managed by only one webmaster. With 35 webmasters uploading their features regularly, I must say our website hasn't crashed in the last 18 months. We also have guest editors and hosts who contribute their time and energy to make our weekly features challenging. Without all these efforts, 
Triveni Haika India would not be the interactive and nurturing platform it is today. And our monthly journal, Haiku Katha, would not have taken flight. The 17th issue of Haiku Katha is set to go live on March 22nd. Another vital factor that contributed to our remarkable progress was the Triveni Gurukulam Mentorship Program, which I con conceptualized in 2021. 50 participants enrolled in the three month program. Although a few withdrew, it was a tremendous accomplishment and we, and we had the privilege of having Ajaya Mahala, Gautam Nadkarni, Ikra Raza, K. Ramesh, Kala Ramesh, Kanchan Chatterjee, and Vandana Parashar as our mentors. Many of our me mentees are now West well established poets. We are currently working on our next curriculum and the details will be announced soon. The Triveni Utsav 2023 held on 3rd, 4th and 5th February was a huge success. The festival had 35 haiku poets and 10 artists from various fields participating and the bonding and that occurred was most satisfying. This was the eighth haiku festival of its kind. Triveni Haika India has brought out two anthologies, Nad Anunad, an anthology of contemporary world haiku in 2016, which won the first prize for the best anthology 2017 at the Haiku Society of America Merit Book Awards. And the second is Amber, I pause. Triveni Volunteer Dhanyavad Anthology in 2023. In 2021, we brought out the first Triveni Haikai calendar. The Indian Haiku movement has received significant support from various journals and organizations. Since 2014, Cafe Haiku has been doing exceptional work running an active blog featuring haiku, haikai poems, articles, essays, interviews, and book launches. The editorial team consists of Geetanjali Rajan, Rajesh Raj, Ramesh Gauri Raghavan, Rohni Gupta, Sandra Mathias, Vidya Venkatramani, and Paresh Tiwari. Additionally, Cafe Haiku has published five stunning anthologies. Another notable contributor is Narrow Road, a literary journal that was established in April 2017 with a focus on poetry, short fiction, and haibun. To date, they have published 13 issues and are thriving. In July 2020, Narrow Road served as a judge for the Glass House Festival's Weighing Raindrops Haiku Contest. The present editors are Paresh Tiwari and Ramesh Gauri Raghavan. Sonic Boom, a journal founded in 2014 by Shloka Shankar, showcases haiku and senju under its paper lanterns session, section. It was published, it has published two anthologies with the second one, Best of Paper Lanterns, Volume 1, receiving an honorable mention in the Touchstone Distinguished Books Award for 2021. The Haiku Seed Journal, run by Sankara Jayant, aims to inspire haiku poets to write haiku-themed verses in a world that's rapidly changing. In 2022, they published their inaugural online anthology, First Blossoms. Tria, founded in October 2021, intends to make Haikai literature accessible to Hindi haiku enthusiasts and readers in India. This bilingual journal features haiku, tanka, micro poems, and Haikai book reviews and has released five editions so far. The editors are Preeti Chahar, Teji Seti, and Vaibhav Joshi. And how can we forget the publishers who back our poets? 
the Red River, Havakal, and Cybernet have been among the most supportive publishers in promoting Haikai literature. And we express our heartfelt gratitude to them for providing a platform to showcase our work and for helping to spread awareness of this art form. We also extend a big, big thank you to the editors all over the world of various print and online journals and to organizers of haiku contests for selecting our poems and bringing our work to a wider audience. As a parting tale, I would like to share my favorite Buddhist story of Anguli Mala. Known as the one who wore a garland of fingers, Anguli Mala was feared for killing the person whose finger he cut off. One day, while in pursuit of his thousandth finger, he came across the Buddha. Despite his efforts to catch up, Angli Mala found himself further and further from the Buddha. Frustrated and determined, he began to run and drew his sword, shouting, stop. The Buddha turned back and with compassion said, I have stopped long ago, Angulimala. It is time for you to stop. I hope more people will follow the Buddha's example and stop to appreciate the beauty of the world around them. Pay respect to Mother Earth and discover the transformative power of haiku poetry. I thank Haiku Poets of Northern California for giving me this opportunity to talk about the current scene in Indian haiku. My heartfelt thanks to Firdos Parvez, Jenny Ward Angel, and Ravi Kiran for helping me put things together. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Carla. That was so wonderful. Now, please feel free to unmute. Thank you, Everyone, Carla. That was a unmute. great presentation. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Just fabulous. Thank you thank so you. much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lori. Yeah, it's it's just a really amazing because I always wondering, you know, uh, as an editor, maybe many of you received a lot of haiku from Indian poets. Um, and even the beginners, you know, you said a quite new one, understood what haiku is. And one of the stories you shared about the trees, you know, the teacher asked to write trees and mushroom woven with the tree roots. And I just wondering, I mean, why Indians understand haiku better than I should not say Americans, but <laughs> um, no, so uh, I don't know, because of culture, uh, because, you know, the Buddha came from India through China, Korea to Japan, I don't know, but I was just amazing speeches, and thank you. Thank you, Faye, thank you so much. I would like, uh, three of our senior seasoned poets uh, to say a few words. Uh, can I uh, request uh, K. Ramesh, Gitanjali Rajan and Vandana Parashar maybe to share your views today? Ramesh, can you go? Ramesh? He has left, I think. Yeah. No, no. Uh, I, yeah, my, my uh, kind of puzzle piece. So, okay. so yeah. uh, Okay. So, first of all, I'd like to thank Kara uh, for giving me this opportunity to be part of this event. And I, my thanks uh, also go to all the Californian who have gathered. Uh, this evening, I would say evening because it's evening here in uh, in, in the place where I am. Uh, so, 
know, it is heartening to see some of the poets with whom I have uh, interacted through the email. Not I have them, but I have interacted. Uh, Oh, I think his line is cut. Geetanjali, would you go? Maybe he can join us later. Thank you. Thank you, Kala, for having me here today. Uh, a big thanks to all the HPNC uh, poets who are here. Um, oh, uh, what I'd like to say about Indian um, Haikai is that it's, uh, like you heard from Kala, it's... Uh, Booming is a word that I'd like to use. Uh, there are a lot of people who have been interested in haiku, and 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 I believe that haiku has always been a, a cultural bridge, uh, uh, kakehashi to speak of. So I think um, it's a good sign that more and more people all over the world are getting into haiku, and uh, and uh, so uh, are the Indian poets. Um, uh, Kala has already spoken about uh, uh, much of the history. And uh, I think Professor Satyabhushan Varma is, uh, was also the very first um, professor of Japanese language and literature in India. And he also was awarded with the order uh, uh, from the Japanese uh, emperor, the order of the sun uh, for his work in uh, uh, Japanese as well as uh, Haikai. Uh, so uh, my focus actually, since Kala has already spoken about many of the uh, historical aspects of English language haiku is uh, to say that we have a very diverse situation in India because of the local languages that uh, uh, we have. We have 22 national languages, which Kala listed out. And we also have, uh, I think, in India, over a thousand spoken languages, according to the last government census. So haiku is actually being written in so many of those languages. And uh, we don't understand more than one or two of those languages, maybe four or five if you're linguists. So I really would like to see a lot more of translation from the local language like say Hindi or Malayalam or Tamil into English so that uh, these poems can uh, be accessed because they have microcultures, microclimates, um, uh, traditions which are being portrayed in, in one language. And if it's accessible to the, to, uh, to the rest of us and to the world, I think uh, that would be great. So if there's anyone out there who can really translate from uh, a local language into English, yeah, that's my wish and hope. Thank you so much for having me here today. And uh, today I've been able to put a lot of uh, faces uh, to the names that I've uh, heard in American uh, poetry, including, uh, I think, uh, Aoyogi Sama and uh, uh, I think uh, Susan Bruce, uh, Paul Miller. Thank you so much for having us here. And of course, my uh, uh, I, I have a personal uh, note of gratitude to say to uh, Mr. Gary Gay here, because I think the rest of us have uh, been blessed with the form of Renge. Thank you. Thank you so much. Vandana, would you like to go? Sure, Kala. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you finally. Uh, though Kala has pretty much covered every aspect of Indian haiku scene, I would like to bring to notice how well the Indian poets are faring when it comes to contests. In the recent years, not only have we seen a substantial increase in participation from the Indian poets, but we also find so many Indian names in most of the contests. To support my statement, I would like to quote a few contests, if I may. Lakshmi Ayer, Meenal Sarosh, and Nina Singh made it to the Touchstone Awards of Individual Poems 2021 shortlist. Shobhana Kumar's A Sky Full of Bucket List and Shloka Shankar's Where the Roots Are, Best of Paper Lentils Volume 2, won honorable mention in the Touchstone Distinguished Book Awards 2021. Ravi Kiran and Kanchan Chatterjee got honorable mentions in 2022 Porad Haiku Contest. Indra Neil Mekela got Honorable mention in the Betty Drevniok Award 2022. Ravikiran got honorable mention in 2022 San Francisco Haiku Contest, and Kanchan Chatterjee got honorable mention in 2022 San Francisco Haibun Contest. 
The Haiku Foundation monthly Kukai has Indian poets winning or getting honorable mentions almost every month. In recently declared contests, six Indian poets have got their haiku selected in Golden Haiku Contest, and Mona Bedi has got honorable mention in Little Iris Haiku Contest. I can't possibly mention all the contests due to time constraints, but I'm sure you all get the picture. So I'll just Vantana, conclude by saying Vantana, you've yeah. not mentioned the, the awards you got. How many awards you got? That was last year, Kala. <laughs> That's true, still. <laughs> Thank you so much. As, as I said, I can't possibly mention all the contests. Yeah. So correct. I'll just conclude. I'll just conclude by saying that we definitely have come a long way. And mind you, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Thank you so much. So great Thank to you. see you all. Susan, uh, before we end, I have a beautiful dance program of two minutes, which is done so beautifully well. So I would like to do that just before, after all, all the questions and answers are over. Anyone wanting to know some answers? We are already here. Can I ask a question, Kala? Um, yes, of course. Uh, I'm just curious if there are any uh, groups or periodicals, publications dedicated to Haibun in, um, yes. in India. Yes, one is Narrow Road, which has Haibun. And Haiku Katha, we have Haiku Tanka, and also Haibun, and, Haibu, and Tanka Pros, and Haiga. Every month it comes out. And uh, I think uh, Cafe Haiku also has um, uh, uh, Haibun showcase in their uh, blog. Uh, it's, it's very popular, very, very popular. Very and great. it's remaining huge. Our workshopping is huge of Haiku and Tanka and uh, Haibun. It's huge. Great, great. Well, thank you for this amazing presentation. It was very profound. I really enjoyed, especially the theater performances uh, taking on the interpretation of, of the haiku. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. It's been a great event. Thank you so much for doing all this for us. Yeah, it took some time <laughs> to collect everything. But uh, <clears throat> I have a beautiful family members to just to, to help out when I reach out to them. Uh, one is Firdos, she's been a right hand to me throughout, and Ravi Kiran, who's throughout, even during the Haiku Utsav I organized, he was there to pack me up, and uh, Jenny Ward Angel has been a very close friend of mine for the last six, seven years now, and she's uh, been uh, there for us. Is Linda here? Uh, Billy, would you like to say something about Triveni? Because you're so active there. Oh, well, I think uh, everyone here should take a visit. Uh, this is one of the most active um, uh, or busy uh, online forums that I've been involved with over the years. And um, a lot of um, very well-known published name um, poets are there, as well as stark beginners with great energy. So I really invite you all to, to join us in the Trevini festivals every day. Well, thank you, Billy. And thank you for being there. You're so active. And thanks. Yeah, Carla, did you call Hi. me? Yes. I encourage everybody also, I think that uh, it's an absolutely wonderful and very supportive community with um, really top-notch feedback and uh, prompt and um, it's really, really wonderful. I wouldn't do without it. Thank you, Linda. She conducted a Renku for us. Uh, it was beautiful, Tripashwa, uh, 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 end of last year. It was so well conducted and we all loved to take part. I'm hoping you do one more for us, Linda. I just um, wrote in <laughs> um, in the in the chat. Um, I I saw the heart of India in this presentation, and thank you. 
I, and it's very true. I, and India is really in my heart. I've uh, been to India uh, many times and uh, okay. been in India a month at a time. And I love India and uh, everything Indian. Uh, I mean, the, the spirituality, the, the, the art, the, the, the culture, the, the traditions, the, the healing um, uh, arts, the, um, the, the beauty, the, the beauty that, is, that permeates everything in, um, in, in this culture. So so precious and um i and no wonder that aiku is booming because i i see um it, it's it's natural for the indian culture to be uh to be one with nature with all creation uh with the permanent and impermanent and uh and uh, accept uh, um, uh, accept what what comes, you know, um, with in with such humility and and kindness, and uh, so that sense of being one and almost like riding, uh, like in uh, in uh, Zoka, you know, riding uh, <laughs> riding being in. Uh, and in in nature and uh, and uh, all that is in us and outside of us and so it's riding from inside of that field of consciousness that uh, in which we all uh, operate and live and express our hearts thank you, thank yeah, you so, so thank much you. thank you beautiful comment beautiful thank you well, hopefully this is building a, a bridge that we can now cross back and forth between the American writers and uh, and India. It would be great. Yes, to, yes uh, we can. Uh, yes. yes. We if should. all we need to do is wake up early, what a reward. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe next time those in India will wake up at seven and we'll be here. <laughs> yes, yeah. we'll do that. We'll get up early and you can uh, have the night. Uh, I offered you all that. I did <laughs> offer you. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just joking, of course. It doesn't really matter. The, the main yeah. thing is that we, we have this common form of poetry together. And yes. it's, it's made a great friendship among all of us. And we write many different kinds of poetry. But at the heart, haiku, I think, is what really uh, strengthens us and, and gives us hope. Hope for the friendship that we have. Thank you. Thank and you and so Gary, much. as you said, Gary, Mariposa or HPNC is open to membership all over the world. So for those interested, it would be great to have more Indian poets in uh, HPNC. That is true, but it's slightly expensive for us. I was in the beginning, I was a member, and then I withdrew because it was just uh, too much of money when we convert it to Indian. Maybe you should make some concession for us and we'll all well, be that's there. That's a good idea. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to make an Indian Mariposa. <laughs> there you go. I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, the thing about it, we really are truly a local group. I mean, up until the pandemic, we were meeting here in San Francisco at Fort Mason, and then we'd have about 30, 35 people, sometimes more, depending on who, what kind of presentation we had. But Zoom it's changed all that for us as well. Mm -hmm. And now we haven't been meeting in person. So, um, you know, we're like many things. We're morphing, changing with the times, I guess. So the problem is with our little magazine or journal, um, you know, if we took in poets from all over the world in bulk, we wouldn't be able to produce the journal, actually, because yeah. we're, we're limited on finances and pages. and Really, that's what membership does for us. It pays for the journal. So, um, if you don't have those funds, you can't produce the journal. It's un, it's just a hard reality of it. But uh, we we get it done. We manage. So, I'm sure David's here someplace thinking, "Oh wow, ten thousand more poets are about to join the journal." <laughs> <laughs> 
True. Perhaps, Kola and uh, Gary, we Kala, can uh, strengthen, to... the, uh, strengthen this connection through the contests. Uh, since we have all these international eyes and ears right now, I just want to uh, plug the, the High Boon contest. The deadline's coming up on May 1st. Kala, maybe you can tell all your yes. poets in India to send yes. in their High Boon and yeah, I remember I was, I, you asked me to be the judge uh, two years back. It and you lovely. did an amazing, very thorough and thoughtful job. Eat, I was, eat, I was eat quite it. impressed. Yes. And if you can see, Jeff runs our contest for us. So he does a great job. Thank you, Jeff. And also, you, Jeff. The, although it's just passed, we also have a Renge contest. So it's something you can keep in mind. For the yes. So. And actually, I have one question. Uh, I wanted to speak. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Sorry. Please come. Yeah, uh, my signal is uh, okay now, so I thought I'll make a remark because it could fade away shortly. So I think yes. uh, this forum uh, in uh, uh, Tribeni Haikai India has been a very rich forum for all the new poets who are exploring haiku. I think uh, uh, some years back uh, we had to depend on journals and we wrote to the journals. I think Kala started this whole process way back. She actually conducted some meetings, uh, gatherings for haiku poets in India. Uh, we met in Pune and we met in Bangalore and many cities. And uh, it was very good that you know, we could actually interact with all the other poets who, who were in India who, and uh, some poets who came from abroad. So it was a very rich uh, opportunity for all of us. And uh, now with all these uh, website and magazines, I think it's it's very rich and all the new poets who are writing, they can get a, who are into haiku or other Japanese uh, genres, no, they, are, they can connect to many people and they can connect to the, the comments and they, they can learn. There's a lot of scope for learning, which I found very important. Uh, and well, that's what Kala is doing. She is providing a platform for young poets and young people who are interested in haiku to learn. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Ramesh. Thank you. I Coming would like to also, it was, yeah, one, uh, I, I was very happy to see some of the poets who, yeah, as I said earlier, Paul Miller and Randy Brooks, whom I think I got in touch with them way back in 2007, 8, 9, uh, even after, I think it's, it's a very rich experience today. Thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, another next step for India might be we have Haiku North America here. There may you might want to have a Haiku India. You know. A, yes. Yes, we should do that. Right. A conference yes, we that happens right. in several years. So, just a seed of thought. Yeah. Well, I have a word to say. This is Suraja from Boston. Yes. Um, and I want to uh, express my appreciation for those of us who are Indians who are living outside of India. And I live in Boston. I know Shalini lives in the UK. Um, and for people like us, it's been a wonderful bridge uh, reaching out to the Indian community where we feel our roots are living in our current countries where we form new roots, that mycelium that you talked about. I think it's, uh, and Triveni it truly is a wonderful confluence for, you know, in more ways than one for people like us who belong in multiple places at the same time. So it's been an honor and a privilege to be part of this group. Thank, Thank you, you Suraja, for you are the Tanka editor and you're doing so much for us. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, that's this, is Tom, this is Thomas John from uh, Santa Cruz. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. And it's the second time this week I've heard the word mycelium. One was at Costco when I was buying a cherry tree and the <laughs> other one was today. Um, I, I wanted to, to, to say something about Faye's uh, comment earlier. I thought when she was talking about the quality of the haiku, that's exactly what I said to my wife as she was leaving uh, this morning was, uh, and thanks for getting us up early, uh, was that uh, it, these, are, these are darn good haiku from India. And, and I think, you know, one of the things that I saw that was so clear when you were doing your dances um, that you could hear the outdoor noises. And I even remember during the pandemic and the awful scenes of the, of the, of the cremations, uh, you know, so many, it, it, India, is, it seems to be a very, you know, obviously it's climate related, but very outdoor sort of aware. And then just hearing, I felt like I was in India when I was watching the dances with the outdoor pavilions. I believe I'm sensing that right. And I just, I just thought that that may be one of the reasons I just felt, wow, 
I have a lot to learn from this. The simplicity, the one thought in the haiku, not two haikus in one, which is one of my faux pas. So I just wanted to say thank you for this immersive experience. And now, <laughs> Faye, to you. Sorry, we I cut in together. Thank you. In fact, I love the spaces so much. I asked Abala, oh, where is this uh, studio of yours? He said it belongs to uh, Sadanand uh, Menon. And uh, I said, can I come for your next uh, rehearsal? He's invited me to go for it. I, I, I just love the spaces and the bird calls and, and, the, and the steps over there. And I thought it was beautiful. And it's in Chennai and I'm in Chennai for the next six months. So I'm going to go there for the rehearsal. <laughs> So I would, would like to think color. Yes, of course. Good Anju. evening again, everybody. And good morning to the others on the other side. I have been, I'm a newcomer in the world of Haikai, writing Haibun for only a little more than a year. And uh, Triveni is home for me now. And it was through Haikai that I actually connected <laughs> with the rest of the world. Even though I've been writing free words for close to seven years now, it is through Haikai that I really connected through to other cultures, other geographical um, climates, as somebody mentioned, and so many little things that Triveni has opened the door for me to. It is a window through which I look at the rest of the world. And as someone called it a nurturing platform, it truly is. And it opens so many doors, so many windows that I'm really glad to be here. And I Thank hope Triveni reaches more heights in nurturing more talent and bringing more talent to India and taking more talent to the world. Thank you very much, Kala and HVNC. Thank you, thank you. Say you wanted to say something. Just two minutes, I have the dance program. Let me just tell you briefly. Yes. Fay wanted to say something. Yes, Ravi, of course. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Fay wanted to say something. Fay, or do you? Fay, sorry. So the quick question. You know, when are you teaching haiku, like Kala and other leaders, are you encouraging them to write about Indian culture, or you don't have to focus on Indian culture because some of the African poets are, you know, the truly writing about Africa. No, we tell them to do a lot of Indian culture. We go through the Indian Saijiki, and we are trying to work on a Saijiki, but it is too vast. But we are hoping maybe in five years' time we'll have an Indian Saijiki, which is which is going to help others. Because for one thing, faith. Um, uh, India has always been rooted in seasons. We have ragas, which are based on seasons. We have our cuisine, which is based on seasons. Our religions are based on seasons. Our calendars based on the lunar calendar. We go by the moon. We don't go by the English calendar. English calendar is only for schools and colleges and offices. But our religious uh, um, functions, and in my mother, I'm with my mother now, she still celebrates two, two birthdays. I said, what? How can you? She says, one is your English calendar uh, birthday, but one is when you were born. Okay, so India is, 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 is full of Indian culture and Indian thought and Indian traditions, which is very, very ancient. And uh, it's coming from the Rig Vedas. It's coming from the pun. It's coming from the, um, the poetry that we, uh, we follow. So I keep telling them, to even use Indian words, but the only thing I tell them, Faye, which I've been following myself, is to not put two Indian words in one haiku because it becomes, I tell them, if you heard two Japanese words in one haiku, you will just walk away. You won't understand. Not everyone will want to go into it and understand the intricacies or the nuances of that word. But one word, I said, you can escape and still make it into the haiku. Uh, just a few lines about this uh, program. Uh, Radhika Karantikar is will be dancing one of the uh, uh, haiku uh, through Bharatanatyam. Bharatanatyam, unlike the drama you saw, Bharatanatyam is a dance form which shows its 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 facial. Uh, it shows the expression and the emotions through the facial expressions and the body language. So if you see that. Uh, we had it for the haiku utsav, for the inaugural function. We read 35 haiku and she chose five haiku and she danced and our people said we can go on. Our whole festival could just be her dancing haiku. It was so good. And so now we're going to show one of Subir's haiku. I wish Subir is here. Subir's haiku. And uh, there it's talking about the forest. 
the wind and the forest and she shows how the forest when the when the seed is thrown by the wind the forest becomes starts growing from a small seed each shoot comes up and a huge tree comes and soon the birds are there the lovebirds are there the 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 fish the river forms and the fish is all swimming and then the deer please don't forget to see the nimbleness of her body and her footwork when she's showing the deer and Yes, we can go for that haiku, um, uh, Ravi. Actually, uh, the recording was not that clear, at least for me. I don't know how it was for you all, um, but the actual, maybe the internet played some tricks on the, but thank you. So let me just say, uh, we're very happy to have had you, Kala, and all the wonderful uh, poets from India here. And uh, we're really happy we could help promote the poets of India. So. And thank you so much for this opportunity, Susan and Bruce and Gary and the and the haiku poets of 
Northern California. Thank you for calling us. It's a huge, huge, huge gift to us. Thank you. Oh, it's a gift to us, really, truly. And I know there's several editors here. And I think, you know, just speaking for myself as an editor, uh, I think if you if your goal is to produce a journal with the best of English language haiku, you have to include the great work coming out of India. And I think today it's just undeniable. You know, our roots are intermingled, our branches are intermingled. We're one tree, you know. Yes. So. And, yes. Our, and our door here is always open to you. So. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us. It was just fabulous. Thank this you. This was so wonderful. Much. Thank you. Thanks, thank man. you. Thank you so much. And thank you, friends uh, from Triveni and uh, our Indian poets. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.